Hi, this is Lisa Allen, and in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough, product demo, and review of O'Day James's Swift Member plugin, which is a membership plugin for WordPress. Now, basically, what you can do with this software is that you can create membership sites that you can sell products in, do product licensing, uh, it even handles recurring payments and things like that. And it's also kind of neat because it's a dashboard where you can control multiple Swift member sites with one dashboard just by entering your API keys from your other sites in here. And you see that when you first get in here, one of the things that you're looking at is it's got some sales reports. So it helps you keep track of how much money you're making on your membership site, uh, how much you've made today, what your last week, your last month, the totals, how many refunds there are. So it's got some nice details here in the dashboard. Now, um, as always, I'm just going to kind of give you my opinion opinions of things that I liked and didn't like about the software. Uh, the first thing that I really wanted to mention is that this is a really big plugin. Now sometimes plugins that have a lot of features are pretty big as a zip file and sometimes it depends on how your server is set up. Sometimes you're not able to upload those kinds of things directly through the WordPress dashboard. And this is one of those plugins that I actually had to go into cPanel and upload there and unzip it through the regular cPanel file manager in the WordPress WP content slash plugins directory to get it on my site. Now, if your PHP settings are a little bit different, allows a little bit bigger file size upload, then you might be able to get away with that through WordPress. But I've always found that uh, there's a few plugins that I always have to do that with. S3 Flow Shield is one of those. Optimize Press is another. And they're just pretty big packages. And so you might have to, to kind of uh, work around to install it, which isn't really a deal killer. It's just be aware. Let's just kind of go through the features and uh, let's look first at membership sites. Now one of the nice things about this is that you can install multiple membership sites on the same WordPress install. So this is kind of unique in that you can put multiple memberships on it and it will handle it for you. So that's kind of nice. Now when you're adding a membership, let's just edit the one that I was playing with. You've got some options in here. You can give the membership site a name. You can specify where the login URL for that particular site is. And this is not a real page. It will generate this as the login page for you. So you can put whatever URL you in, you want in here as long as it's not a real page in the site. Choose the template. Of course, there's only a default template as of yet, but they have given you the option. So I assume that they're probably going to plan on adding some more templates here. Now I felt like the default template was a little bit on the ugly side. Just by default, there are, when you get over here in number five, we've got some theme options so you can change and, and tweak colors and things like that. But by default, I thought it was a little bit dated looking, but you can pretty it up by tweaking the theme options. So that's good. Now, as far as email, you get to choose where the emails for this membership site are coming from. So your name or your name in the product or the name in the membership site would be something you could put in here, the email. You can edit. And so under email notifications, you can edit the new user notifications that it sends out. Put this to yes. You see we get oh, what you see is what you get with some sensible defaults in here and to substitute things in data in it's just using the curly braces kind of like a short code and so if you want that to send you just set it to yes if I don't now you can also set it to send you admin notifications when you get new members if you are doing something really high-end you might want to have that because you would have fewer customers but you're probably going to want to turn this off uh, or leave it off if you're selling like thousands of copies, otherwise it would just drive you crazy. Now also you've got payment processors. Now this is another part of Swift member that I thought was really good. You have direct payment processors. So you, if you have like a merchant account of your own, you can go through to checkout or authorize.net. You can also do PayPal standard and PayZa. Now you've also got third party payment providers like ClickBank, DealGuardian, DigiResults, eJunkie, JVZoo, ProductPay, 
Warrior Payments, WSO Pro, and Zaxa. So you've got quite the variety of different payment processors you can do. And you can even mix and match your payment processors and choose which ones you want on which membership site. And so if I wanted to say enable JVZoo, I would just go in here and click on JVZoo IPN and then you would have to go into your account and get the secret key out of your JVZoo account and put it in here. So then it would be able to link up with your JVZoo account and process things for you. You get an API signature so that one's just slightly different but whichever one you choose the account it will tell you what you need from your account on that payment processor. So that is all really nice that they've got so many options for you. It's not limited at all. Now as far as autoresponders I do think that the autoresponders available are a little bit on the limited side. You get Aweber, which now has started allowing you to actually import your lists, which they didn't allow you to do. Um, well, import your lists without doing another double opt-in. So uh, that was one of the things that I never, never wanted to use Aweber before because I couldn't import any of my lists and now you actually can. So Aweber is, is now a, a decent choice. So as you can see, there's really no custom option in here if you're not using one of these. Now you've also got the theme options as I mentioned. Uh, you can choose which theme presets you want to load. So you've got blue, purple, so this is like the overall tones. So if I was to load the blue and set some specific header colors, like maybe I wanted my header to be maybe a very nice dark navy and maybe I wanted my sidebar to be a more more mute kind of gray and then you can add a logo which goes kind of up here in the area in the membership area and then you just click on load and it loads the button colors which you can then edit you can choose whether to do login captures or not. Now you've got the login box which shows up on the front you can configure how wide it is you need a background color if you wanted to add a nice really spiffy looking background image you've got that option here too which can really make your your membership site login just pop so you've got lots of lots of configuration options here so anyway lots of really nice configuration options like I said I thought thought the defaults were a little bit on the slightly ugly side but there's plenty here to make it so that you can really make it look how you want it to. Now also you've got a place in here to do your menu links so you can control what the link will say so maybe like support and then you would have the URL either inside the website or you can choose a page and you can also attach an icon to the menu which I think is a really nice touch and the home page that people land on so you can pick one of your pages page or a post and if you want a special footer that appears in that particular membership site then you can do that and then you've also got uh, some additional options so if you want to add some more CSS to your login page if you want to add like maybe some JavaScripts, like maybe some tracking scripts or something to the login page or the members pages then you can also do that here. So you've got, you know, there's a lot of a lot of stuff you can customize, but you don't have to. So I think that really is nice about this. Now, once you have added member sites, you can also add a product. And so you choose the site, the product name, the sales page URL. So this could be the sales page on the site, or it could be your sales page on, you know, Bank or somewhere else so you just put in the URL so really customizable uh, then you can choose the product you can and then you can also tell it whether this is just content or whether it's software and if it's software then you get some additional options here that will allow you to to actually kind of control your licensing and make sure that people aren't stealing your stuff very easily now on payment you can choose the payment type one-time payment or rebills. Now one thing that I think is maybe a little bit missing here is that I don't see any option to drip feed content. So while you can set up one time and then you just put in the price or subscription and you can really finally control how often it rebuilds. You can even turn on a trial and so do a trial for a certain number of days or a certain number of weeks or months or yeah it's got really nice control over how long the trial can go, how often and it rebuilds. 
and the, the number of times to rebuild. Then we've also got product bundling, which is another nice thing. So you can add products together. So if you've got multiple products that you want to sell as one, you can do that and it will add them all. Then you've also got IPN and then you've also got um, the theme. So you can add, basically the only option here is to add a product image right now. But that makes it so that you can make the product you know, so people will be reminded of what the product is when they're looking at it in their membership to see what products they have. So that also is, is pretty nice. Now let's also just kind of look really briefly at the users. So you can add a user, you can select the membership site you want to add them to, choose email, password, first name, and add some products to them which makes it really easy just to, you know, if you need to do this manually, of course, if you have it set up on uh, one of the payment processors, most of the users will be added automatically. But if you need to add somebody, then you have the option to do that in here. And just, just those basic options, really. Now, orders, I actually kind of like this because you can add an order or you can view all the orders here and the orders allows you to really see who's buying what and and how so you get the order the amount that it was for the user that bought it the product which payment processor it came in through date and status and so you can see if something's pending or if it's been refunded really easy to see from this screen now let's say licensing let's view the licenses now you can also manually add licenses if you need to most of the time the licenses will be generated for you by the purchase happening and the IPN notification from the payment provider now domains I really liked this you've got domains you can see the domain the license key activated the status and if you want to add a domain what you're looking at here is the licensing the hash would be the key that you get from the other so this is this is allowing you to uh, manage multiple domains here from Swift member which I think is actually pretty nice now also let's see reports I thought the reports section was pretty nice too so you can see what products have been sold and you can choose the different days and then you can view the reports there. Now one other thing that's really nice about this one that I kind of often wish was available directly in the plugin that I'm using is the ability to look at the log. So you can see what dates, the type, you can see exactly who's been accessing and, and things that have been going on. You can see HTTP requests, so you get the IP address of somebody who maybe bought a product and later goes and claims that they didn't get the product. Well, you have the IP address as proof showing that they actually got that, which is going to be more important now that PayPal is going to start allowing people to file chargebacks on digital products up to 180 days later. So this could really come in handy in defending yourself against that kind of fraud. Now just one last thing that I really liked and we'll go over this. In under utility you also have this database section. So you can clean up the database. Basically what this does is it kind of compacts the database. It's kind of like defragging and I find that um, this is something that I need to do quite often on my WordPress membership sites to keep them running fast because the more holes there are in the database the slower it gets and by compacting it makes it easier for the database engine to be really fast as it looks for things. You can also export the database to a backup file and then you can restore it right here in the dashboard which is really nice. Now one thing that I did think was a little bit missing here is that there is no option to upload that directly to a cloud server like your Amazon account or your Dropbox account. So it's going to be on your actual server unless you download it yourself 
and uh, and that and store it somewhere. There's also no recurring automated backup of the database or cleaning the database, which I think would be really nice. And I have seen that in some other plugins that I use, um, but I think that would be a really nice thing for them to add. So, but like I said, it's not a deal breaker. There is some really nice features in here. It's just you're going to have to remember to come in here and back up your database yourself. One last thing, you've got the tutorials and the training are directly on board under training videos, which is really nice for the training to be right there so you don't have to go anywhere else. Now the only thing that I didn't like about this is that you can see we do not have any buttons to maximize the video so you can view it full size on your screen. Now it's true that you can go over to YouTube by clicking the YouTube logo but it really should have this set so that you could maximize the videos themselves. So just one little thing that's missing there, not too much. Now I'm just going to check my notes and make sure that I mentioned everything I wanted to mention. Oh, also there is IP blocking and logging. Now we mentioned the logging, but you also can block IP addresses. So if you have somebody who's being a nuisance and who's like a serial refunder, you can lock them out. Now let's go back to the products because there was one thing that I missed mentioning too. Under products, you can pick out the buttons for your product here and it will grab them for you. You can also clone the product, which makes it really easy if you have products that are similar but have just slightly different descriptions or slightly different options. That makes it really easy and fast. So here's my overall summary. I, I really think that SwiftMember is an up and coming plugin. It has a lot of features out of the box. There are a few little things that could be improved or added to, but none of them are really deal killers. And for the price, this is a really good one to pick up and run with if you want to run any kind of recurring or membership site for your customers. So that's it for this review of Swift Member. This has been Lisa Allen. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.